Hi guys, um, Happy New Year first of all and uh, I hope you all made uh, very good plans for the ne next um, upcoming year, 2021. Um, this is my very first video that I'm going to be filming for this year and uh, I want to start with the Q&A. Um, I have received this email with, uh, one of my from one of my clients that uh, has very uh, very good questions and um, instead of just answering it to her, uh, because I've have I had these questions from my past clients in my last six seven years of doing what I'm doing, so I thought that I probably better to make this video and uh, so everybody can understand a little bit more about how everything works in my meal plan. Uh, so I'm gonna start with reading you all these questions first, so you know what's coming. Uh, the very first one is uh, reason for the same meals every day. Uh, question number two, why combining protein in orange or fruit uh, that is full of sugar uh, in my meal plan is the same. Uh, number three, can carrots be replaced with yams? Number four, uh, can orange be replaced with another fruit? Um, number five, uh, salsa and avocado is not uh, just the guacamole. Uh, number six, should I use the high carbs day? Uh, of the meal plan and uh, synchronize it with the training on that day. Uh, number seven, is this meal plan specifically for uh, people who wants to do eye competition? Number eight, there is not much var uh, variety in the meal plan uh, and not much room for making eating pleasurable. Can I backload be done? Uh, number nine, uh, how are you arriving at this uh, with no knowledge of starting point of BMI or weight or maybe goals for the person. And number 10, how does it work for everyone? Uh, great questions and um, uh, very good questions. I really appreciate when clients do ask me these things because more you guys know, better it is easier for me to work with you and uh, better for you to adapt to this uh, type of lifestyle that I am uh, having. So let's start with number one, the reason for same meals every day. And I'm gonna tell you a story. So when I started with my meal planner, uh, her very first initial meal plan was uh, very elaborate. It was a lot of ingredients on a plate, trying to uh, probably try, trying to hit a whole bunch of different um, uh, nutrients, things in, in a meal plan. But I was full time working person, single mom, two kids. Um, business started to grow, my fitness industry started to grow very well and um, so it didn't work for me. It was too many things and I couldn't uh, even understand some of, the, some of the ingredients on it. So I asked my meal planner to make it simple. Just two to three ingredients on my plate so it's easy to cook, easy to prepare, easy to follow. And she did. And I followed that formula for the rest of my um, life and up until now. So knowing that majority of my clients that do come to me and they are all busy people. Uh, it's, a, it's lots of single moms, lots of very high end professionals that they days are so super busy. So there is not much room for making your gourmet meals. However, if you do prefer to cook and if you do have time to spend in the kitchen for every meal that you're preparing, you're more than welcome to make that, that variety of food that I give you, uh, make it a little bit more interesting. So, and that's how it goes. For the whole week, you have high carb, low carb, high carb, low carb, and high carb meals are the same on all, all the high carb days, and then low carb meals are the same for the low carb meals. And then next week, I'll change things around a little bit. So every week, it's gonna be little changes that are coming in. So that's the, basically the main reason is to make things simple. Uh, why combining protein and orange that is full of sugar, isn't that affecting the more on a dark, dark fat. So dark fat called brown adipose tissue, but. Um, and uh, I actually came across a super cool book called uh, by Lyle McDonald, The Stubborn Fat Solution, that is very well described what brown fat is all about and uh, that it's actually quite essential for us to have it and it's responsible for your heat production rather than that it's full of mitochondria in it, the cells of bat is full of mitochondria in it and it's it, we do not really have that many places that we store it but it's not what adipose tissue of the stubborn fat especially for ladies around the legs area right in, in our um, uh, but and glutes and like hamstrings and quads, all of this area that is like the worst for us. So why do I combine 
why do I combine sugar in a fruit? Not sugar, sugar, but fruit and uh, protein. So we're going to talk a little bit about insulin, right? When a, when a carb or sugar comes in, insulin goes up, cell open up, and whatever attached to glucose molecule, insulin will bring it in, right? So I'm going to give you a very bad example. Let's say you're eating French fries. Your potato is your carb, simple carb. Your insulin go up, cell opens up. What attached to this protein is fat that this potato was fried in, so that fat enters into the cell. Right, so glucose is attached together with the protein, and that's my main idea of bringing protein right into the like or nitrogen. At this point, it will be a nitrogen molecule of nitrogen that is gonna enter into the into the cell. So I combine fruit and protein, and I also combine fruit and um, nuts. Nuts is a representation of your uh, omega threes and omega six. Right, so those fats are good to enter into the cell. So that's the main reason why I have noticed that. Uh, in my in my practice that when people are trying to separate this eat apple on one day or orange on one on at one time and then later they eat nuts uh, it actually doesn't work that well so when i know that people are trying to break things apart a little bit it actually does affect the results that i see on a, a every week measurements so yes i do combine those two things uh, together just for the specific reason Okay, number three, can carrots be replaced with yams? So the carb is not just carb. We have high glycemic carb, we have low glycemic carbs. We have high density carbs, we have low density carbs. Uh, so basically the, we have 10 grams per 100 grams of carbs in per 100 grams of carrots. We have 10 grams of carbs in it. And in yams, it's twice more. It's 20 grams, so it's double the amount of carbs. So that's what we have, that's what we call density of carbs. So on a lower carb day, or when I am reducing carbs, I am not only reducing it by replacing the carbohydrates with something that doesn't have it. I actually reducing the uh, the carb density in it first before I removing it uh, in my in my meal plan. So uh, yes, you can if you reduce the volume of it. Right, so if let's say it has a, like one cup of um, carrots, right, then oh, yes, you can technically reduce it, uh, replace it with half a cup of yams. But uh, if you are trying to go amounts per amounts, then uh, better not. So I'm trying to keep low carbs in a low carb uh, content. So, yes. Um, can they replace orange with another fruit? Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, there are like a lot of very cool fruits that are um, we can replace it with. Uh, in my, my my meal plan is super simple, right? So for the protein, I have two things that represents protein: it's chicken uh, breast as the uh, low fat, and I have ground turkey as a high fat, right? So orange or apple can be replaced with different fruits as well. Same as for the protein can be replaced with a different protein, or if you want to go vegan, you can replace it with the vegan protein. So, but those two ingredients are representing either very lean protein or very uh, or fatty protein. So for the fruits, I really I, I really love things like um, uh, like a pineapple instead of orange. You can use that because it's full of enzymes. I absolutely love um, uh, um, my goodness. I love mangoes, apples, um, You all of this fructose is good and it's not full of sugar unless you remove the fiber from it. So orange is still going to be lower glycemic index than the orange juice simply for the fact that it's fiber in it. So it's not really that bad. Uh, if you do have allergies to, uh, to citrus, yes, you can of course definitely remove it. Um, papaya would be another like absolutely great fruit to have uh, with you because it's very low on the carb content and it's full of um, enzymes. So uh, all of these things, absolutely yes, you can you can change things around. Number five, salsa and avocado isn't it just a guacamole? Uh, absolutely yes, right. So however, uh, I am pro whole foods. I like to make my stuff from scratch. And I do not like to buy already prepared meals simply because less the human interfere with the food before it gets to my table, I like it better that way. Uh, avocado is full of omega-3 and omega-6, but once it's exposed to the oxygen, omega-3 actually gets oxidized very quickly, so there is no more omega-3 in there. Right? Uh, when it sits in a jar, 
and has to survive their shelf life, then there is no more uh, good nutrients in it, like omega-3 is gone, right? Plus you have preservatives in it. So yes, if you wanna just buy it in a store, and plus you don't know how much content is in there. Uh, when I'm saying like, I want to have half, a, half of avocado plus a tablespoon of salsa, I want to have that much um, fat, approximately that much fat in my um, avocado meal. So yeah. But technically, yeah, it is, uh, absolutely. Uh, should I use high carb on days that I'm training with you? Let's say, let's say a person is training with me three times, three times a week. Uh, this is still not my minimum requirement. Uh, on my program, I want people to train uh, four to six times a week. So four times a week for those who are just entering into the program and six times a week usually for the competitors. Right? Or if you want to have dramatic results and fast, rapid, dramatic results, I would want you to train six times a week. So by saying that, you can try to time it, but after a workout, it will take 72 hours for your muscle to um, recover. First, you're going to have inflammation, then you're going to have your immune system coming in, fixing it up, and then you get stronger in the muscle. And it takes about 72 hours for this specific muscle group to recover from the, um, to, for the exposure to the exercise. During the 72 hours, you have to have high carb coming in, low carb coming in, you have to have all of the nutrients coming in. So, in theory, it could work, but it actually doesn't really matter, as long as you are having your uh, nutrients come in. Uh, when, when, people, when I have people training with me for the long period of times, and let's say we are mostly there to build the muscle and uh, slowly reduce the body fat, and they are not under the pressure of getting ready for the show, what I do do is uh, during the intensity training or strength training, I actually recommend to just use high carb meals, making sure that you're eating enough to produce the maximum working capacity for the muscle. So I recommend that on my strength training, and I recommend that on my squat challenge program. So rather than that, it uh, doesn't really matter. Yeah. If somebody is to need to lose quite a bit of weight, that I wouldn't bother with putting them on a high carb meals during the intensity training. I would just recommend them to keep going carb cycling because that will be tapping a little bit better into your other position. But uh, if somebody who is there for just tone the muscle, grow the muscle, and increase the amount of muscle, then I would uh, definitely recommend to go just high carb meals. Okay, next. Is this meal plan specific for the preparation for the show? And this is how I make it work. When I first competed, I'll give you a story, right? So, uh, here I am teaching 14 dance fitness classes for Steve Nash based on ballroom dancing, my heart rate goes up to about 95% of my maximum heart rate. That's a very high intensity cardio. And uh, I, at the time, I, I had to stop running my 10, 10K. And then uh, we did filming and somebody took a group picture of us and I saw myself aging. If you're interested, like in the notes later on, you can ask me and I will put a picture of it, uh, of me when I realized that things need to be done. I wasn't even four years old yet and I already started to see myself changing and changing for the worse, right? So, and I, at the time, I said to myself, it's not gonna happen, I need to think, uh, switch things around. And this is when I decided to compete. In two months, I ended up on stage and I competed for Sandra Wickham here locally and I placed fifths and my body dramatically changed in two months. Dramatically, I'm talking dramatically. So when I, when I saw that um, training together with the meal plan, that's when I understood how important it is to marry those two components together in order to achieve results, right? So basically what happened is I reduced my body fat, I increased my muscle, I toned it, I uh, reversed the aging process in my body. It was absolutely evident, it's evident in every single before and after picture. You can go on Google and check my reviews and I have a few before and after pictures in there uh, of different clients. So. But at the same time, if somebody comes to me at 15, let's say they are like a 30% of body fat, 30, 35% body fat, and they want to be on stage within 12 to 16 weeks, my meal plan is able to do so. Isn't that like what everybody wants to reduce the body fat and tone the muscle? Yes, that's exactly what my, what my meal plan is doing. So basically it is training and eating like a professional 
athlete in order to achieve professional results. You can go as slow as you want to, and it's going to be nice and steady for you if you are that type of person, which is nothing wrong with it, or you can go nice and rapid. But uh, that is going to be depending uh, like just on your personality, right? So whether or not you want to go fast or slow, it's uh, entirely up to you. So there is no right or wrong in here, right? So everybody do it at their own, at their own pace. However, if you do end up competing, you are going to look very good on this meal plan. So, so did my, my clients and I have a lot of pictures of them. Uh, am I using the same meal plan? Well, uh, I had to hire uh, coaches down the line. So I had uh, my last coach, Iris Kyle, and um, it was a very interesting experience because what can a meal planner, another coach, do for me, right? And in fact, she did quite a bit. So the experience that I gained with her, I incorporated in my own training and I incorporated in the training for like and changed the meal plan according to that. Uh, sometimes just one little thing will tweak things to the point that it's going to bring you dramatic change. And uh, that's what we're talking uh, with the meal plan. Uh, whether or not you're fighting your stubborn fat, right, uh, which is like the biggest thing for a lot of people, yeah, or whether you just want to be a little bit more toned and drop, like, I don't know, some people want to drop 20 pounds, some people want to drop just 10, some people just want a 5, and some people come to me and they say, like, I look okay, but like all of a sudden all my muscles are very soft, so it's all, it's all the same. And we'll talk about it a little bit at the end, because last two questions are addressing that exactly same thing. Uh, there is not much, so question number 8, there is not much uh, variety in the meal plan, not much room for making eating pleasurable. Can a backload be done? Uh, so when you come to a doctor, a doctor prescribes you a pill, and you go on that pill, and uh, it starts working for you, you stay on the pill. You do not ask the doctor for a different variations of the same pill. It's going to do exactly the same thing. Uh, unfortunately, the food does affect us in different ways. Uh, we are emotional eaters many, very often, and we like to feel good when we're eating. It's a great um, uh, way to bring family together at the dinner table at the end of the day. It's uh, great to socialize with your friends. But when there is a um, goal, when a 40 years old, 50 years old person sits in front of me, a 35 years old person, 30 years old person, or a young competitor sits in front of me and they have a goal in, in mind, Right, and this would bring them to the goal. You started to understand that once emotions get involved, it screw up everything. Once you started to understand that emotional eating is not going to make you look good in the mirror, then you started to understand that you're eating food on purpose. So there is a purpose in the way we eat. And we are a biological machines that need to be supplied with fat, carb, and protein in a specific ratios in order for this machine to operate properly. Right? So you can spice things up the way you cook the stuff. My emotional attachment to food is the way I look at myself in the mirror and the way that my body feels uh, on a daily basis. Aside from that, like two to three weeks of rebounding after the show, <laughs> that's a totally different topic. But uh, um, the way I feel, the way I look, the way my body looks, the way I feel in my clothes or in my dresses, uh, the way when I go out, uh, so that's what gives me the highest satisfaction with the way I eat my food. So when I'm cooking my chicken, I have my absolutely favorite way of cooking my chicken. And when I eat my vegetables, I have the, the very specific way to cook my vegetables. I am a creature of habit. I develop this only that that's the way I, I try to do different things. But I also try different marinades. I try different spices. Uh, I like pepper. I like cayenne pepper. Uh, I like garlic. Like all of that goes into preparation of my food. So definitely you can make things up, uh, spice it up. Backloading, all right, so we're going back to purpose. Once you started to eat the way that my uh, meal plan is intended to, your metabolic system will switch. And uh, you will start to react very differently on your carbs. And when you are doing the high carb, when you bring high carb on purpose, it actually gives you a very good reset of uh, 
of your metabolic system. It's basically get you burn things a little bit better. And but you have to use it very carefully because uh, backloading usually sets things up and some could get things up in a very wrong direction, right? You started to feel sorry for the rest of the week and looking forward to the end of the uh, end of the week just to make sure that you like uh, eat something completely different, and all of a sudden things stop working for you because like for the rest of the week you have this negative emotion about your food, and at the end of the week it's like oh my god what am I doing, right? So I like balance. I like balance. Uh, you definitely can go out and uh, sit with your friends at a coffee shop and uh, maybe indulge in something that is not uh, directly on my meal plan if you're not competing and make things a little bit more, more pleasurable. But I want people to understand that when you started to feel sorry for yourself because you need to eat so much chicken, look at yourself in the mirror again. Go naked in front of the mirror and look at your bum. Look at your back legs, look at your love handles, uh, look the way your arms are feeling, right? And just poke yourself, poke yourself in all of these places and see like <laughs> how your body feels. You know, like when you started to feel nice and solid in underneath of your skin, it will be absolutely different way you start to think about your foods. Okay, so but you can bring variety to you depending on how you how you cook your chicken, right? So I found a way to cook it freaking the best on my um, uh, smokeless grill, like it's just the best, nice and moist, and it keeps it in the fridge very nicely for the whole week. I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now this is two very important questions: How are you arriving at this with no knowledge of starting point of my BMI or weight, etc., or my goals? I had to think about it when I get this, um, when I get my mail, right, from this lady. And uh, so here is the thing. We were all born even and almost identical. Couple of different chromosomes made us into men or women. A uh, couple of different DNA tweaks made us into white, brown, Asian, Caucasian, whatever it is, right? So we are, we are all different in that sense. But this is such a small little thing. We all are identical, the difference is just one degree. My name is Helena, your name is whatever, Stacy, right, or Michael. And um, so this is the only thing that we are different from. What we all have in common is the fact that we are made of protein. And we're made of fat, and we're made of, um, we need, we need uh, carbohydrates to move it on, right? So we have uh, fluids in our body and our bones um, connected together with them with the skeletal muscle to, in order for us to move. So, we are biological machines, as I said before, right? And in order to maintain this biological body, we need a specific amount of carbs, fats, and proteins. There are a lot of different studies of how much of things we need to have in order to maintain before we're 30 years old or after 30 years old, uh, how much we need to maintain in order to prolong our life and, and feel younger, right? Where we become different is the way we screw up that system. Where we become unique is the way we break things apart. Some people like to drink alcohol. Some people like to smoke weed. Some people like to do drugs. Some people like to work senselessly without sleeping enough. Right? Some people are going through so much stress that they cannot eat anymore. Some people have been active all their life. Some people have been sedent sedentary all their life. And this is how we screw the system up. Yes, we have become very unique in that sense. What my meal plan does, it brings everything to the base level. You require 1.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. I go per pound, grams per pound. I have my theory <laughs> and it works <laughs> so far. Uh, so you, you require that much in order to maintain up until you're 30 years old. And then when your sarcopenia kicks in, sarcopenia kicks in, my Russian is too, kicks in, you started to lose 2% of lean muscle mass a year. So when somebody comes to me at 40 years old that have never exercised or ate proper amount of food throughout their life, they already at about 20% of muscle loss that is affected in many different ways. They are full of inflammation, they're full of fat, the muscles are not working properly, they're not neurologically connected to the, uh, to the brain and um, mechanical systems and like electrical systems of the body. Right, so my meal plan is bringing everybody to the base level. And then we start monitoring things. When people come to me too fat, it means the metabolic system is down. When people come to me too skinny, it means the metabolic system is too skinny and they were trying to correct it with not eating enough, right? In both 
cases it's not eating enough. In both cases it's sarcopenia, sarcopenia kicked in and uh, the metabolic system slowed down. Right? Uh, forget about being before 30 years old. We're talking about 30 and after. Right? So the rest of your life basically. And this is when we're fighting the biggest amount of inflammation and muscle loss and stress and marriages breaking down and uh, sicknesses and illness and your um, endocrinal system goes to shits after menopause and all of the stuff. But and then like all of the drinking come together, right? So like we fuck things up quite quite badly, right? In during this uh, during this time, so by bringing your training to the base level. By making your brain fire up on the muscles in there, by making sure we provide minimum amount of fat, carbon, protein, we'll start to make your systems work again. Uh, the meal plan is super simple and it gets rid of majority of food that creates inflammation. Unless your systems are so bad that you are allergic to like whey protein, for example, right? Or that you're allergic to whatever else like you could be allergic to. So in this case, we like switch things around. And then after I go on my meal plan, for the first two to three weeks, I monitor things. We do weigh-ins every week and uh, we do um, just to see how things work, right? And based on that, we adjust things. The first four weeks, I will let you eat. You eat the biggest amount of food that you probably ate in your life. And a lot of people come to me and cry, I cannot eat that much. I am so full and I, <laughs> I am ready to throw up. I cannot do this. And like, and like I'm eating, like I'm basically telling them, eat up, chump. Then next four weeks, we, I take things off of the plate, all right? And the last four weeks, we take things even more off. What this meal plan more look like is Elimination meal plan. So let's say you come to your naturopath and you tell them like I am allergic to something I don't understand what. I am sensitive to food but I don't understand which ones. Right? So the doctor will put you on to the elimination meal plan and do exactly the same thing for three months. It will start to take things off your plate and then when it's all out and only very basic ingredients are left, you'll start bringing foods in. And let's say you brought your favorite cheese back in and all of a sudden you bloat it like you're five months pregnant. Here's your answer right so this meal plan works more like an elimination meal plan and it will get rid of a lot um, get rid of a lot of inflammation in your body the very first thing that I see that the people's beliefs um, diminish in the size because all of the inflammation starts in the gut all of our silent inflammation starts in the gut sit there for a long period of time uh, beyond pain threshold and it will manifest future in life in the different illnesses and sicknesses Right, so that's what the meal plan does, it gets rid of it. It will help your body to actually operate and digest your food a little bit better. So everything started to work a little bit better. Okay, so that's how I know. Everybody's goal is what? Get rid of the body fat and get stronger. Get the muscles working. Some people, 10% of this population will end up competing. That's about it. Yes, this meal plan is designed for me to compete. I have trained and ate, eaten that like this for the last seven years. And uh, I have a lot of clients on the same, same thing. And then the last four weeks, this is when I really closely monitor my competitors just to make sure that we either arrive, if we arrive too early in it, I'll keep the carbs in, bring some more carbs or reduce amount of cardio and if we are still need to go a little bit more and we are not where we need to be then we'll increase certain things and decrease certain things on the plate so that's how I monitor it okay so that's how we know <laughs> and it's been working so far for the last seven years now how does it work for everyone and I think I just answered this question we all are identical the difference is just one degree how we unique is the way we fuck things up in these our lifestyles. Excuse me, my language. <laughs> Didn't mean to swear. Uh, but anyway, that's that's the truth, and that's how we're unique, right? So I prefer when people do not drink on my meal plan for the 12 weeks, allowing your liver to actually detox and your body to detox. Uh, and I have very cool data to support that, uh, how it affects uh, your weight loss. And uh, yeah, so that's basically what it is. And I hope I answered all of these questions. Uh, I do love to answer the questions. I am a nerd and I have done it for a little bit. 
to understand how all of these things work. Uh, I welcome any question, good or bad, it doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes people think, oh, I better not to ask, maybe she will think that I'm stupid. Please.